report the news that nobody has the balls to report? Why am I the only one breaking stories like this? You can call me Uncle Turtle Boy, Turtle Boy, Clarence, Aiden. I don't care what you call me. If you and me do not say that you are going to take my baby out of revenge and make him a transgender baby. I think they don't like the things that I'm saying and they want me to stop saying them. But I'm not. I'm never going to stop. Now, these are the kind of stories, guys, that must be told. I'm just a guy who's breaking stories and reporting those from my basement. Hey, what's up, Turtle Riders? How's everyone doing tonight? Good? Good? Excellent. Welcome to the Turtle Boy Live Show, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host. They call me Uncle Turtle Boy around here. You can call me Aiden, Turtle Boy, whatever you want. It's cool. Uh, I am the host of the Turtle Boy Live Show, the publisher of Turtle Boy Daily News. I kind of run things around here, if you will. Uh, we do the show every Tuesday and Saturday night at 9 p.m. So if you haven't done so, you're going to want to go ahead and you're going to want to smash that subscribe button, folks, and you're going to want to hit that notification bell. Like I said, we do this every Tuesday and Saturday night at 9 kind of review the stories of the week but then sometimes we'll do like an impromptu live you never know like last night we did an interesting one if we just have some interesting things to discuss so yeah you're gonna want to go ahead and do that but tuesday and saturday nights are really like the content tonight believe it or not we actually do create content around here we don't just do nonsense and, and obsess over random people who don't matter uh, we actually do stories about things in the community that people are talking about that matter to the community that should be discussed. Uh, we expose people who deserve to be exposed. We kind of shine the light to them. And that's exactly what we did today and uh, exactly the story that we're going to get into very shortly. Uh, I've shared the link to the stream on the various social media pages that we run. If you haven't liked those pages already, go ahead and do so right now on Facebook. And you can catch me. My personal account is Clarence Woods Emerson. Uh, you can also uh, follow our Facebook you know, our business page, it's called Turtle Boy Daily News. Go ahead and like that one. I think it's up to like 35, it's getting close to 36,000 on there. And then Clarence has like, I think close to 28. I think that adds up to like, what does that add up to folks? 28 plus 36 is like, what, 64? So there's 64,000. We also had another page with, it was called Uncle Turtle Boy. It had like 23,000. I, I put that on the back burner. I deactivated that page because I just don't like having too many pages. It's like too many inboxes and shit to manage. I might deactivate that one another time, but we got that one in the bag just in case. So go ahead and follow those pages. We're trying to get up to 100,000 again. We had one a few years ago at 100,000. That was pretty cool. They took it down, but knock on wood, they're letting this one stay up. We'll see how long it lasts. I really don't think we're that offensive. I feel like five years ago, the kind of things that I was posting online on, on Turtle Boy was a lot more offensive. Like the word FUPA appeared much more often in blogs five years ago and like you know skank and words like that that you wouldn't want to say in front of your mother depending who your mother is uh, like if you're the kind of person we write about you're probably mother doesn't care much about you but normal people wouldn't want to say those words but now we don't really do that anymore i feel like it's more hard-hating news so uh i feel like maybe that's why they're not fucking with us much i don't know but either way i love doing what i do every day i enjoy it so thank you guys for reading and sharing and subscribing and all that stuff really means a lot. Uh, I've also shared this on the Twitter account that I run. My Twitter account is at Dr. Turtle Boy. That's D-O-C-T-O-R Turtle Boy. Because if Jill Biden is a doctor, then I'm definitely a doctor. You can also catch me at Turtle Boy Phone. But uh, Dr. Turtle Boy is my primary. So check me out on there. We have a fan run account called at Turtle Boy Tweets as well. We have a fan run Instagram account called at Turtle Boy underscore daily underscore news. I don't run that, but we got people in there that do that. We have a Facebook page that I don't run. It's a fan run group. It's got like 25,000 people in it. It's called Turtle Boy Only Fans. Check it out. Just join everything. Just join everything. Or we have an email subscribe list. You can do it that way. It doesn't really matter. We got an app coming out soon, man. Turtle Boy is going to the top. I'm telling you right now. Uh, it's going to be cool. Also, if you really like what we do and you want to support what we do, we do a stream on Thursday nights, but you got to be in Turtle Club to watch that one. So the Thursday to Turtle Club, you get ad free on the website. It's none of those annoying pop up ads that you see on the site. I know this could be a little pain in the ass sometimes. $15 a month, you get none of those. You also get access to the Thursday night stream on the website itself, tvdailynews.com, that nobody else gets. And you get a free t shirt of your choice. You just got to let me know which one and I send it to you as soon as possible. So, 
Uh, yeah, go ahead and do that. Most importantly, by joining Turtle Club for just $15 a month, you are supporting what we do, the journalism that we do that really no one else is doing, quite frankly. I mean, think of the stories, guys. Just in the last month, the stories that we've – every freaking day, it's an, it's another blockbuster around here, isn't it? Like, I mean, last week, it was like the Kendra Laris. Like, who else is doing Freedom of Information Act requests from the Boston City Council to find out if they really got emails that called them the N-word? You know, who else is exposing – the people that teamed up with the squad to kick the shit out of those poor Republicans outside of that event in Somerville, you know, who else is teaming up and giving, you know, a platform to these predator poachers who are doing God's work out there by going around and finding these deviants, nobody else. So again, if you like what we do, turtle club is in the bio. You can uh, join there below. You can subscribe to our podcasts on Spotify, all types of stuff on there, etc. Yeah. Where is the talentless raccoon? So where's Deb? I, my producer Deb is supposed to be. I'm not sure. Um, she's not here right now. So maybe she's coming soon. But if not, we'll get her back. I just sent her a message. But okay. Um, also, if you guys like the program and you want to support what we do, unfortunately, you can't donate on the super chat because YouTube took that away from us. We've been demonetized for well over a year now. Last August, we had the wrong opinions about Joe, Ma Joe Biden's uh, climax mandate. And as a result of that, uh, we were completely, they took away our ability to have ads and they took away our ability to accept donations from you fine people with the super chat function. But no worries, guys. No worries. We act, yeah, we do have a podcast. We're on Spotify. All the stuff, all the links are in the bio. Just read the description. It's all right in there. We, we do it nice and clean for you guys. Uh, so we don't have to explain this every time. Just go read it. Um, also, um, we have a thing called, we just built our own called Turtle Chat, right? So you can donate, there's a link at the top. If you click on that, you can donate whatever amount of money you want to the program, to Turtle Boy Studios or whatever the hell you call this operation I'm running here in my basement. Uh, and you can write a message with it too. And I will get an email notification and I will show the message on the big screen when I get it. Like, so for instance, this was the other day. We got one from Lauren D. Laguna since 25 and says interview with Ryan Waters, October 10th, my channel, Lauren D. Laguna. So you can, you know, promote your, promote your website this way, or you can just call out somebody who needs to be called out. You know, uh, maybe somebody stole your food stamps or maybe uh, that's what I would recommend it for. If you're going to do the turtle chat, just call somebody out who you don't like, or maybe say a happy birthday to someone. It's your turtle chat. So you can do whatever the hell you want with it. And it's going to go up here. Like Superstar says, can you do a show making spinner baits and call everyone a dick suck? That would be so cool. Yeah. So, you know, whatever you want, it's your turtle chat. Okay. So I think I see the talentless raccoon in the backstage. She's not really talented. Hi, Deb. How you doing? I'm here. Good. How are you? <laughs> uh, thank you. Welcome to the show. Um, so I made it. And uh, I think we're about ready uh, to get started here. Uh, so... Right. Uh, do you want to bring up the blog? I mean, I have it on my end if you don't, if you're not ready to rock. I have it. Um, I just have to choose all the ads because it won't let me into my account now. Okay, I got it. No worries. You sure? Uh, yeah, I got it. All right. all right. So anyway, guys, um, let's see what we got here. Um, so this story, obviously the story has been, uh, pretty all, it was all over the news about, I don't know. April, so how many months is that? Nine months ago? It's not much, six months ago, around there. I remember it first happening and I briefly read it over, but I just didn't have that much time to get into it. And I totally forgot about this story. But then I got a message about it the other day. A few people messaged me and said, Did you see this story? I'm like, Yeah, I saw it six months ago when it first came out. I'm like, no, no, no. It's been quite a few updates on this story. And I looked into it and there has been. And I, I thought this would be a, a kind of a simple story to write, but the web these people have created in Stoughton is just, whew, rarely do I write blogs where it's like, wow, like I'm just disturbed while writing the blogs. This is one of them. This was a disturbing blog. And you know around here that I'm generally rather supportive of the police. You know, Turtle Boy backs the blue, all that good stuff. Uh, not these police, not not cops like this. Th these are shitty, bad cops who give all good cops a bad name, which is why it's even more important that we expose them for what they're doing. Okay, because this one is, you know, 
it's disturbing. So let's start from the top here. So this girl's name, uh, she was 23 years old. Her name is Sandra Birchmore. She lived in an apartment in Canton, which is right next to Stoughton. But for all intents and purposes, she's a Stoughton girl. She's from Stoughton. She graduated from Stoughton High School in 2016. Now, her life, man, was just, there's no other way to describe it but tragic. Um, but I didn't, I obviously didn't know this girl, but for somebody who's had the amount of tragedies that she's had in her life and for her to still have been like people that know this girl or knew this girl seem to, uh, seem to say she was seemed like a happy person that she was, uh, optimistic about the future. She was excited. She was pregnant. She was excited to be having a baby. Um, but her life, man, was just one of the most tragic things ever. So she grew up with a, a single mother and who helped raise her with her grandmother and her aunt. All right. So I don't know where dad was in the picture, uh, but these three um, uh, kind of helped raise her. Well, the mother died in 2016, a month apart from the grandmother. I don't know how, but they, they died. And the aunt died was, you know, she kind of took over as caretaker and the aunt died in 2019. So by my, she probably was around 21 years old when her aunt died. So this is her entire support system just gone, right? Imagine being that young and your entire support system is just gone. Like you have no one to call. Like, I mean, you have friends and stuff, but it, like, friends are not the same thing as family. It's nice to have good friends. Don't get me wrong. But I've learned over time that friends kind of come and go and families with you forever. Even though family can be much more judgmental of you and much bigger cunts sometimes. Uh, ultimately, they're going to be there. For, like if you go, if something bad happens to you, they're going to be the ones that are going to drop everything to be there for you in a heartbeat. You know, and she lost all of that. So she didn't have much here. And she loved the police. This young lady was uh, wanted to be a cop herself, and she, uh, you know, if you go on her page, there are tons of pictures of her with police officers. Okay, and she was part of this program at Stoughton High School uh, that was uh, a, like a cadet program, uh, Explorers or something it was called. It was run by uh, a, a, an officer and former deputy chief named Robert Devine who is in probably now his like mid to late forties. And he had been on the job since the late nineties, probably his first job, his only job. And, you know, he's a very well known and I would say highly respected police officer in town. He was honored in 2011, flown to Nashville by none other than Robert Mueller, the guy that uh, communists were counting on to, throw Trump out of office back in 2018 uh, that never kind of, he kind of let him down a little bit there. Didn't come to fruition the way it was planned. So they did it the old fashioned way. They did mail-in voting and 81 million people voted for Joe Biden instead. Anyway, um, they flew him there to uh, get an award because he had ironically been in charge of rooting out bad cops in Stoughton. He had led a series of investigations in cooperation with the FBI that found a bunch of corrupt cops in Stoughton and they were fired. Uh, and yeah, so he was like the, literally the poster boy for clean cops that didn't like bad cops essentially. So he was trusted because of that. He's highly trusted and he's, you know, in charge of this cadet program. He's around kids and I don't know if he has kids of his own, but he's definitely married. His wife, is a Quincy police officer. And I might have more on that tomorrow about how they met. I found out some interesting things about that. Uh, and he might have groomed his own wife. We're going to get to that though. We we're going to get to that. There's some interesting Ime Udoka things going on with his wife, but we'll come back to that. So she's also a cop in Quincy. All three of the men in the story are actually married, which is fine. I mean, it's their prerogative it's none of my business, your family life. Um, but all three of them, and we're going to see that's kind of like the big reason that 
they did what they did to this girl is because they wanted to preserve their reputations in the community as like married family men. Like that meant a lot to like that meant more to them than the well being of this girl. Um, so in 2013, though, Divine began to have an affair with the woman by the name of Tiffany Overstreet. Now, I don't give a shit who's fucking who. That really has never interested me. I don't care about uh, this is not an infidelity blog. To me, that's not newsworthy. People cheat. It happens. It's nobody's business. Nobody knows what's going on in a person's home. Uh, you, you know, I've written probably 30,000 blogs. Zero of them have been straight up about infidelity. I get, this is not Jerry Springer. I have no interest in that kind of stuff. But it became the public's business in 2014 uh, when he went and got a restraining order on her after claiming that he was receiving threatening messages from this woman, Tiffany Overstreet, in October of 2014. He then allegedly, she allegedly violated this uh, order by sending flowers to his wife with like some sort of ominous threatening message on them on October 20th of 2014. And then in 20, uh, November of 2014, she kicked it up a notch. She went full revenge porn on his ass. Uh, unfortunately, you know, I know what that one feels like. And, uh, he, so he, she sends out in this email to all of his friends and coworkers and like their wives and stuff, naked pictures of them. She's like, fuck it. Now, Massachusetts, ironically, is one of two states in the entire country in which revenge pornography is not illegal. Like us and it's either South Carolina or Mississippi. So we're in great company there. For some reason, that's not illegal here. In every other state, it's illegal to do that. In Massachusetts, it's not illegal. And so this gets sent out to everyone. Now, to me, if it's if that's not against the law, then what are you going to charge her with, right? The order says not to make contact with you. So you can send out revenge porn of somebody who has a restraining order on you till the cows come home in a legal, you, you shouldn't be able to do it, but legally you can. And if this happened to a regular citizen, the cops would tell you, you shit out of luck. That's what would happen. Trust me. I know there's nothing you can do about this, but this guy's a cop. And this is where the corruption part comes in because he uses his, uh, what is the word I'm looking for here? He uses his um, connections, I guess, as a cop. Influence. So, influence. Very good. Thank you very much there, Deb. There you go. Who said you're a talentless raccoon? Oh, you know. I, I like you. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. So he uses <laughs> his influence and experience uh, as a police officer to basically have this woman who normally would not have been investigated, fully investigated. Uh, and so they actually send like a SWAT team into her house in December and take her computer and shit like like real like shit that you would do if you were like, you know, if you were like the target of an FBI, like, I don't know, something really serious. Like this woman sent out naked pictures of him to his. He got he got he got embarrassed by it. And, and they sent the, you know, the weight of the world on this woman. And he has to have her investigated for this. And, but he didn't mention, I guess, the fact that he had an affair with her. That's my, my reading of this. Like I did a lot of research into this one and kind of put it all together. This story has been out there and people like, you know, did I didn't break this story. Okay. But what I kind of did with the story that nobody else did is I, I put it together in a, in a chronological way here that nobody else has, because there's, this stuff is all over the internet. And if you just put the pieces together, it all starts making a lot more sense. And you get a, a better picture of what's going on here. And of, the, of these three cops that are kind of featured in the story, to me, the dirtiest, the most despicable one of them is Divine. By far. Like, he's the most devious. He's a lawyer now. Like, he's the only one that is completely uh, just, not just unrepentant, but like, I'm going to get revenge on your ass kind of thing. Like, fuck, like, like this guy is a terror. He's a dangerous guy. He's a bad, bad, bad dude. And so he, she gets charged with uh, violating the order. And he was also the, spokesper the spokesman for the department and the deputy chief at the time. 
And because he brought all this unnecessary drama with him to the office, Chief Paul Shastany, Shastany, I don't know how to pronounce that, Shastany, demoted him back to just regular officer. Now, he did not want to fire this guy. It says right in this article that I found here that he wanted to, he considered him the victim. Shastany said Tuesday that modifications have been made regarding the role of the 42-year-old Divine, who told police he had a months-long affair with Tiffany Overstreet of Easton that went sour. Divine is second in command in Stoughton and acting chief. Overstreet was arrested December 18 by state police and charged with three counts of violating an HBO. And again, it's like that would not, that's the kind of shit you get when you're a cop. Your everyday citizen would not get the state police to raid a woman's house and arrest her for violating an HPO. Most people, when they violate a harassment prevention order, they get a summons for a magistrate hearing or something like that. But no, this like this woman was treated like she was the most dangerous person in America. And it was because this guy used his influence to kind of do that. It got transferred to Dedham Court. Uh, Shastany took a... Uh, took on some of Divine's work and blah, blah, blah. He stood by the deputy chief saying Divine is the victim. He he is ensured due process. He is a victim. Okay. So he stood by his, he stood by his uh, subordinate there. And he claimed, and at the time I can understand why this guy would look like a victim. Like, you know, so you stuck your dick in something crazy. Like you're not the first person to do that. Not the end of the world. You're not like, you shouldn't lose your job because of that. Like what she's doing is wrong. It's immoral. And I would consider if I if I knew what the chief knew at the time, I would consider him a victim as well, certainly. But there's certain things that he was not telling everyone. So he claimed he was only doing so. Um, so however, despite claiming he was a victim, Divine admittedly continued to meet up with Overstreet for sex. So he continued, this woman has an order on him. She's not allowed around him, and he's still banging her. But guess what? Here's the best part, though. We got good news, folks. So let me, he's actually a hero for doing this. His heroic penis saved this girl's life. So it says here, Divine told state police he continued to contact her, even with the order in place, and that he did initiate some of the contact, including meeting for dinner at one point. Trooper Sean Quirk wrote in the December report, Overstreet told police that during this time, she and Divine continued to have a physical relationship. The meetings, according to the report, came after Overstreet had threatened to commit suicide if Divine abandoned her. Court records show that a week before her arrest, Divine and his wife requested the court immediately rescind the harassment prevention orders. So I can understand why he would do that. Like, so basically he's like, yeah, I'm really scared of this woman, but I just, I have to fuck her to keep her alive. That's literally his defense. I had to fuck her to keep her alive or else she's going to kill herself. If I don't, my dick is just so magical and it just feels so good that like you might as well be, you'd rather kill yourself than not feel it inside of you in the backseat of a car outside of a restaurant in Easton. Like that's the life right there. Now, I don't understand why his wife would ask for the order to be rescinded. I don't get that part. Uh, I have some questions. I have a lot of questions about her, quite frankly, um, but that's a different story. So anyway, there he is right there. Um, Divine effectively weaponized the police against him and got them to raid her home. We've kind of talked about all that. A normal citizen would never be able to get that kind of thing. Uh, mysteriously, she also had a break in at her apartment five days later with no signs of forced entry, according to police. But uh, her apartment was in disarray. Hmm. I wonder who could have done that. Interesting. So that's bad cop number one who runs the cadets program in Stowe at Stowe High School. Bad cop number two. So he got a 60 day unpaid uh, suspension for that after an internal affairs investigation found that he improperly ordered the investigation of Overstreet using department resources and technology. So um, this is um, bad cop number two, Matt Farwell. Uh, as you can see, he's a canine cop for Stoughton. He grew up in town and he was in Divine's cadet program as a student at the high school. So he was almost groomed by Divine. Then he becomes a groomer himself. And his brother, uh, his twin brother, Billy, did it as well. Billy, so uh, he joins the, the force in 2012 after being a Wellesley cop 
Matt Farewell did. 2017, Billy Farewell joins the police department uh, in the same town. And they're twins. So I guess that's how it works around there. So um, they were, you know, hi they're both, I believe they're both veterans too. And so they came, you know, like, why wouldn't you hire them? Like they're, they're Stoughton boys. They're from town. They know it well. They're, they're clean cut boys, right? They, they, they like their community. They want to be, they've always wanted to be cops. Why wouldn't you hire them? And the, and the public trusts them as a result of that. And so he was kind of a high riser in uh, this whole thing too. So he worked, he immediately starts volunteering and working for the uh, Stoughton Police Explorers program that Divine ran. That says it right in there. And Divine liked this guy a lot. And he says great things about him and his brother. So if you if you search for Divine uh, Matt Farwell's name on any of these Stoughton pages, a lot of stuff comes up and it's all good stuff until recently. Uh, he was recent in 2017. He was, uh, prom I don't know if being detective is a promotion, but he was, he became a detective at a ceremony in 2017. So he must've done something right. He's wearing a suit. There he is. What's up, Deb? I think you it's like, like a sideways, like a parallel move. Okay. So it's a side. So it's not, it's, it's not a promotion to be a detective. Yeah, no, I think it's usually a sideways. Do you have more money? I don't think so. I think it's just like a move, just a change of title type thing. I feel like it's like a respect thing, though. Like people yeah, it's respect one of those, yeah. detectives. Like it's you wear, just a promotion, but it's just like a parallel. You wear a goddamn suit. You're doing serious shit. Like you're solving cases and stuff. Right. You're not doing the bitch work. Yeah, it's you not know? the beat anymore. It's like you know, yeah. plain clothes shit and stuff. You're not out there arresting junkies and hookers and stuff like that. You're you're solving murders, putting clues together, sitting at a desk, doing yeah. things, making phone calls, getting shit done. So you're a big shot. You're a big shot. So we thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, so. He is a detective now, and so that's kind of a big deal. And he was 25 years old when he was working the cadet program, and Sandra Birchmore was 13 years old when they first met. She looked up to cops, as we've, we've talked about already. And by the time she was 15 years old, evidence collected by investigators indicates that this guy was already having sex with her. Now, there's no 100% smoking gun that proves that, which is why he was never charged with statutory rape because you can't prove that um, because the victim is dead. So she can't testify against him because she's dead. And so what they have are messages between them that seem to indicate a sexual affair, but you can't actually prove it. And, uh, witnesses, other people around the same time that say, yeah, they, everybody knows they were banging, but that's not proof. You can't, that's not probable cause. It's not enough to get a charge. And so they were unable to charge him with statutory rape after this all came out. So, but yeah, I mean, it's undeniable that they were sending, it, the guy's a creep. You know, he's, he's met, he meets this girl who is clearly vulnerable at the time her mother was alive. And he starts to, uh, he sees that it's it's just like the Catholic priest scandal, guys. Like the Catholic priests didn't go after kids that came from loving two parent homes, no, because they know that those kids aren't fucked up enough and damaged. They went after the kids that dad wasn't around. That's the kids they went after because they know that they they're not gonna tell anyone and they're fucked up anyway. So they just viewed them as playthings that they could use for their own sexual pleasure. And that is the way these gentlemen saw, these gentlemen, these monsters saw this girl as a, a vulnerable plaything that they could use to get off. He was banging her when she was 15 years old and he was a cop. Should be in jail, period. The fact that this guy is not in jail is, is a travesty. It's just, it's disgusting. I don't know how his wife is still with him. I mean, she just must, he just me, must be feeding her a bill of lies that she wants to choose to believe because it's easier than coming to terms with the fact that you're married to a predator and a pedophile, but whatever. Um, so according to witnesses, they had sex when she was 15. He continued the secret rela relationship while carrying on as a devoted married father. So he's got kids. He was the last person to see her alive and he was seen on video entering her apartment for 20 minutes. So she um, committed suicide, I believe, on February 1st 
of 2021. Don't hold me to that. Maybe February 4th. I forget the exact date. But she didn't go to work for several days and they became worried about her. My sources tell me that uh, she hung herself, um, which is just fucking horrible. Horrible, man. I can't even... Hanging yourself, man, is the word that like gets... Like if uh, I just, it's hard to think about, like, you know, you think about ways that people can kill themselves. And I think the, uh, it's shooting yourself in the head is probably the easiest way to do it. Cause it's just over. You just do it. It's over. You jump off a bridge, man. I've heard stories from people that have jumped off of bridges and lived. And, uh, like ha as soon as they jump, they immediately regret it. Like did you, and it's just like, imagine you just, most people don't live though. And like, they just, they're just regretting it the whole way to fuck. What do I do? And the people that, you know, hang themselves, it's like, that's commitment, man. You have to see that out. You have to continue to intentionally asphyxiate yourself. Um, and, and while you're in the most pain, it's like, imagine being in the position that she was in mentally to do something like that. Like how helpless and alone you must've felt because she was pregnant. She was pregnant and she had that to look forward to, but she was abandoned. Like her family is gone. So the police were her family. She'd known these people since she was a child. And the second she got pregnant, she was no longer a useful sexual play toy for them. Now she was a liability because her pregnancy could seriously disrupt their perfect little lives as married, respected fathers in town. And so they're like, yep, got to dump you. Funny, he didn't want to, funny that he only wanted to dump her. So he claims that he was over there to dump her. Now, some people have opined that she, like, like did he kill her? No, he didn't kill her. That's pretty much been ruled out at this point. Um, if they, try, this guy is not well liked by the state police or the Stoughton police. If they wanted, if he committed a murder, they are not covering it up for him. Trust me on that one. No way. So this, she did kill herself. And for her to feel alone like that, and, and like, there's no other option. Like it's, it's depressing to think about, man. Depressing. Like she had everything to live for. She had a baby coming, but maybe she was thinking like, like she grew up without a father. And she's like, my kid's going to be like that. And maybe she's very sad and depressed in general. And she did, she wanted to save her child from that. I can't even, you can't, you're not thinking straight when you think about suicide. And so I can only imagine what was going on in this girl's brain. I think about people like Michaela Miller who were doing this and how hopeless they must have felt. And lots of people, man, it's, it's fucking, obviously it's a personal subject for me. And many others and a lot of you when i was dealing with some issues about 18 months ago a lot of people reached out to me and shared their personal stories and man i still like me i still read those sometimes it's like wow this affects a lot of people and it's extremely depressing um and you need support you need people who are there for you uh and unfortunately the people that she trusted most were police officers who were literally just using her to get off to so that's that's all she was to them. And that's fucking horrible. It's not illegal to treat a woman like that. Like uh, just to something you can stick your dick in whenever you want. A lot of men do that. But this woman and the way that this is literally grooming. They groomed her. They targeted her. And they used her. And when she got pregnant, she was no longer useful to them. So they deserted her and she felt alone. He said, he claims that the conversation that they had over there was not good. I would imagine it was her begging him not to abandon her because he denied being the father too. He said the last time they had sex was, I believe, November of 2020. Don't hold me to that. November of 2020. And that the baby was due in September of 2021. Now, we don't know. That's just what he said, that the baby's due in September of 2021. But, I mean, I'm not a biologist or anything. But 
to me, that doesn't rule it out. Like you can have, you have sex and I don't know. I can, I, I, I get my cycles mixed up sometimes a little bit confusing. Women understand how the cycles work a little bit better than me, but I think you could have sex in November and have a baby in September. Don't hold me to that. Either way, no, we don't. No, you'd be doing no, you like can't. July. You'd be doing like July. July. It's nine months, dude. That's not nine months. If you That's count, eight like months. November, right? Okay, That's so eight. August then. I mean, that would be a. But isn't day. there like a two week a two week thing there? There's like a two week. I don't know. No, Maybe. you don't get I think a two week. I think it's like a two, there's a two week something where they like there's some sort of way they calculate like the gestation thing to figure okay. out the due date. So she might not even have known the due date. I mean, like the um, just the actual date of conception. She might just have known what like they told her preliminary. So this is sex ed with Turtle Boy. Right. Um, so this is uh, yeah, this is, this is sex, sex ed. Yeah, so this cool. is sex ed with Turtle Boy. So I don't know. Either way, he denied he was fine. Now keep in mind, he would have no way to know if he like if you weren't the father. How would you know that you're not the father? How would you know that you're just like fucking? I'm not the dad. Well, unless you knew that she was fucking other dudes, which he did. Because they literally pimped her out to other dudes. So, uh, like, here's the whole document that shows all this stuff. Um, blah, blah, blah. You can go and read it on the blog. It's pretty disturbing. Anything that you see redacted in this blog pretty much is one of two things. Sex or suicide. Like, you can use context clues to kind of piece that one together. Um, but they're unable to charge him. Now, meanwhile, his twin brother, Billy, how does he come into this? The third cup. So Billy Boy um, joined the department in 2017. And I just can't imagine. Now, him and his brother are both married. I've seen Billy's wife. She's good looking. They have kids and shit, all these people. I can't imagine why. Like, why would you want to, to have sex with this girl? And I mean, no offense to this girl or anything like that. But, like, she's she's just, she was an average, she's a nice girl, I'm sure. It's like, but you're all, you all want to, like, you can't resist fucking this girl? You have, like, what? What? I, I don't understand this. They all were just like, yeah, like, like fuck her. I, I, you fucked her, I want to fuck her too. My turn. How disturbed are you people? Like, you, are you fucked that girl too from, from high school? I want my turn. Who does that? Who raised these people? These are twin brothers. That's what I was wondering reading this. I'm like, where is their mama? Who raised these men to act, to treat women like this? Ay caramba. So he starts, I guess, um, banging her when in 2020. Because they've gone through his phone and they've gotten all these explicit messages and photographs. And uh, he was doing it while he was on duty. He was having unbecoming unbecoming physical encounters with her on the clock. He also attempted to then introduce Birchmore to other men, presumably to have sex with. Like, what? So it's not enough just for him to use her. He's like, yeah, I'm going to get off on the idea of other men banging her. Because you're literally an object for sex for me. That's all you are. Like, they did not view this girl as a human being. So he attempted to introduce her to other men. And in text messages between Billy Farwell and Sandra, she alleged that um, she may have had sex with Divine. He also met up with her while on the job and ran her name through the CGIS report dozens of times. I don't know why the fuck he would do that. And how stupid are these cops that do this? Remember Jen Dusa got caught doing this too? Like, every cop knows that if you run the names through the CGIS system, that's all documented. You're going to get caught. Because, like, anybody could just run all their exes and stuff through the system and blah, 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 blah. They, like, every cop I know knows not to do that. But these guys, all they always do it. Like, they do this all the time. So she allegedly confronts Billy in front of his family about their relationship, and he claims he blocked her as a result. So he claims that she pulled a crazy bitch on him, which again, too, it's just like, well, you played with fire, dude. Like, what do you want? You know, all references to sex and suicide are redacted in the official report. Okay. So 
He did that. Now, Robert Devine was aware of these sexual relationships and grooming and neither said nothing or participated himself. He texted inappropriately with Birchmore when she was an adult, which he lied about to investigators. So that was one of the things I was sustained against him, that he lied. Initially, he's like, what? I don't like, I didn't do anything. I don't know what you're talking about. They're like, well, we got all our messages, and it's kind of undeniable here, dude. And they're, they're sexual messages. They also met up while he was on duty. These guys are all just fucking on the clock. And presumably had sex based on Facebook messages between them in December of 2020. Farwell last had a sexual encounter with them in January of 20, with her in January of 2021. Billy did. Matt admitted the last time we think was November of 2020. This guy met up with her in December of 2020. So this is why Matt Farwell was like, you know, I'm not the dad. It's like, well, because he knows all these other guys are banging her too. That he, because he's facilitating it. They're all doing it together. All talking. They're probably having high fives. Like, oh yeah, how'd you do what you like? Like, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, this is Stoughton, man. This is like a bad Lifetime movie. So they met up for a dinner at a restaurant that month and also while he was on duty. It's all in the report. Um, both of the Farwell twins have resigned, but Divine is fighting on. So Divine is now an attorney. And this is what this is what he said uh, in an email to the Globe. Divine, Divine denied the allegations against him. I will challenge these findings in every forum available to me and anticipate legal action for multiple infractions. So this is more bullying. This is more like, well, now he's not, he can't scare you with the badge anymore. So he's going to scare you with the, I'm a deformation attorney. I know how these, uh, I've dealt with so many lawyers like this. They think their shit doesn't stink. They think they can scare you. George Leontire was like this with me. Michael Gaffney, they all thought they could fucking shake me down, man. I'm not that guy. They quickly found that out. But it works with some people. People are afraid of attorneys. And so he's like, I'll get the globe to do this, you know. At least in my case, this was all po a politically motivated sham. I don't know what the politics are. Against an employee who has consistently spoken out against leadership. So he's doing the whole like, I'm the good cop exposing bad cops and that's why they're coming after me i'm actually the good guy here it speaks volumes that they released any findings to the media before ever notifying me in a letter to the chief mcnamara last month divine slammed the decision to place him on leave earlier this year as unnecessary and unfair he wrote he had no personal relationship with birchmore a lie and did not share his phone number with her a lie According to the newspaper, should you try to defame me at the end of this divine wrote to McNamara, I am prepared to uh, I am prepared to resort to every legal means at my disposal to fight you. Good luck with that, pal. So if you're doing the math at home again, they all had sex with her. Like, to me, any one of them could be the father, but not one of them can disqualify themselves as being the father. So many suspect that officers and co other cops that I've spoken to about this have all told me the same thing. There ain't no way that they were the only ones in the Stoughton Police Department who, who knew about this. There's no way you could keep this went on for years, man. There's no freaking way that other cops in that department didn't know what was going on here. That doesn't mean they banged her. But it means they knew. Certainly people knew about this. Because again, Billy Farwell was out there trying to pimp her out to other people. You got to approach him first before you do that. So the girl um, was literally being passed around and um, trying to get other men to sleep with her. The report states that a fourth officer who now works for another town's police department took advantage of her as well. Chief McNamara declined to say which department it was, but the Abingdon police kind of went and outed themselves when they announced that they were investigating one of their own in connection with the Stoughton case. So good for Abingdon police for being, being like, yep, he's here now and we are investigating it us. Now they did not, neither Abingdon nor Stoughton share what this officer's name was, but I can't believe this. I'm like, is this a joke? They forgot to redact something in the goddamn report. Check this out. <laughs> so it's it says a second interview of blank. So they redacted the officer's name was conducted on February 9th, 2022 
at 2 p.m. Abington Town Hall, so we know it's the Abington Cop, in a prearranged conference room. Heel was present with, so they forgot to cross out heel. And so all you do at that point is you just Google heel, um, Abington Police Department, and you find out, oh, there he is, Officer Joshua Hall from the Abington Police Department. And wouldn't you know it, he's the school resource officer. It's amazing. These guys are just gravitate towards children, high school girls. It's almost like they're groomers. Now, I understand that a, a, a lot of women have a thing for men in uniform, right? It's like, you know, it's better than steroids, having wearing a cop uniform. It's like you, you probably feel, it probably makes you feel a lot more confident and a lot more cocky. And that's okay. But just you can't act on it. You can't act on it. You can't, like, you're not actually that fucking special. There's millions of cops in this country. You ain't that special. Trust me. You're just another guy when you go home at night. Um, and th that's why I like police. Because most cops I know are just regular guys and gals. Right? That's why I like cops. That's why I think cops get a bad name. Is because people act like they're just evil paramilitant. Not the cops I know. The cops I know are just regular people that we watch football together on Sundays. Those are the cops I know. They're, they're dads. They mow the lawn and shit. So... But some of these guys think they are just sex goblins, if you will, uh, the second that they put on one of these uniforms. And so he becomes a school resource officer. So luckily he is on leave while they investigate this. And if if he really knew this was going on and, and had done anything inappropriate with this girl uh, or was part of this at all, then he should never be allowed to be a cop again, ever. Um, so... One thing these people all had in common is that they took advantage of the trust the community gave them by taking jobs within the schools in order to gain access to teenage girls. If you search for them on, I don't know where I search for, the, if I search for them on like a Stoughton page or like, I don't know if it's the public schools or the police page, I search for them and these things come up. This was from Veterans Day in 2017. Billy Farwell and Divine, I don't know about Matt were all veterans. And so they were all honored at this thing. And it's just, you go on there and it's not pictures of all of them. It's pictures with girls, girls, like high school girls. And like, look at this guy. That's Billy Farwell. Like, you know, he thinks he's hot shit. Like I'm fucking biggest cock and stoning right now. And when I wear this uniform, I can have any woman that I want any age. They all, they all just think about how hot I am, how much they want me. And then there's divine there. Same thing. That guy, you could tell that guy's an asshole. And, you know, here they are being honored in 2017 for that, blah, blah, blah. Uh, lost in all this, right? Uh, so that guy, the former chief, Shatasty, I'm never going to pronounce that right. Shastany, Shastany, who initially said that Divine was a victim and later changed his tune. He actually resigned in protest in 2016 and good for him. Because they didn't fire Divine over the abuse of power situation with Tiffany Overstreet. So he wanted him fired. So that, I mean, that takes a lot for you to be like, I want my deputy fired. Now, and that's the politics that what's his name was referring to, that Divine was later referring to. Oh, they're coming after me, blah, blah, blah. Well, the town manager, Michael Hartman, overruled or ignored because he ultimately the town manager has the authority to decide who cut you know who's getting fired and who doesn't he should take the advice of his police chief for certain and he listened to him but he just ignored him and he's like i'm just gonna give him 60 days unpaid so it takes a lot to be like you know what fuck you then i quit so he quit well he did have a golden parachute in fairness because he went on to collect his pension and then double dipped as the police chief in Braintree and then again in Bourne and the police union filed some sort of grievance about this because it made it made the whole pension system look ridiculous that somebody can just do this. But to his credit, if, if they had listened to this police chief in 2016 and did what he wanted, Divine would not have been around to groom this child and he wouldn't have been able to have a sexual relationship with her. Because to me, it looks like this guy, Divine, in my opinion, this is just my opinion. If I were to guess, 
He's the older one. The other two twins look up to him. He's been on the force for like 20 something years. That guy is, you know, he's well respected. That guy was like King Dick of Stoughton. You know, his wife is a cop in Quincy. His shit didn't stink. And the police chief wanted him fired and they didn't fire him. Had they done that, he wouldn't have been able to groom and uh, do whatever he, and take advantage of this girl. Maybe, maybe I don't, we don't know all the details of this. Maybe he's kind of encouraged them to, I don't know. Maybe none of this happens without his involvement. Certainly without the cadet program, Matt Farwell never would have met this girl. Never would have met her. And Divine ran the cadet program. So it's just, this is so disturbing, man. Because again, I support the police. But with great trust comes, uh, or with great uh, respect comes great trust. Like we trust you, man. We're putting our trust in you. And if you betray our trust, that is worse than your, your average ratchet committing a crime. Because we didn't trust those people anyway. But we trusted you. We trusted our kids around you. And you abused your trust and your power. And you hurt this poor girl. You groomed her. And you kind of, you did it like the the other two waited until she was 18. Because they know the law. The other way, the first, the first guy, Matt Farwell, he couldn't wait to get his dick in her when she was 15. He didn't care about the law. Law be damned. The other guys were like, hey, let's wait until she's 18 just so we don't go to jail over this. We might be pieces of shit, but I don't want to go to jail for this. And so they waited till she was 18 before they, like, then they started passing her around. Man, this is, this is a human being, man. This is one of God's creatures, this girl. And she was, she was dealt a shit hand in life, but you know what? She was optimistic about the future. Despite the poor hand that she was dealt, you go to her Facebook page and it's mostly positivity. She posts about her, you know, her mother and her grandmother and her aunt a lot. She was obviously extremely close with them, um, but she had new life, you know, she had new life. And I think she was counting on Matt Farwell to be that father figure for her. But he was like, you're pregnant. See ya. See ya. I mean, at that point, it's like, you got to man up, dude. Yep. Yeah, you got to tell your wife what you did uh, because it's like now it's like, you know, it's a human life is involved in this. You got you to gotta be a man about it. But he didn't want to be a man. He's a coward. So he tried to cover up her, her involvement. And unfortunately for him, she killed himself. She killed herself. And it all came crashing down, all of it. And so, to me, this whole thing was just so disturbing. Hartman ends up, uh, by the way, S Hartman ended up getting fired the next year as town manager and sued the town. So again, this is what I mean by putting this, you didn't break the story. Turn I know, I know I didn't break the story. Well, everything I had in here was all out there already, but nobody had kind of put the pieces of the puzzle together here. And I thought that was important to do in this story. And so this took a lot of research, but uh, it all made, like I got the bigger picture of what was happening as a result of put, and I kind of understand Stoughton politics a little bit more than oh, a lot more than I, I didn't know shit about stone politics. I know that town spot pizza is good. And that's mentioned a million times in the goddamn report. I've never been to town spot pizza, but people say great things about it. Uh, if we have any stone turtle riders in the house right now, but um, I know we got a lot of people down in that area. Brockton's over there, Easton. Um, but anyway, um, yeah. So like, this isn't when they initially came out, people were like saying, Oh, it looks shady. And it looks like a murder. It's not. That's one thing I want to be very clear. There was no murder here. These are not killers. These are just cowardly perverts. Divine met his wife when he was squad leader. Yes, that's right. And that's that's what I was going to allude to before. So I don't know. That's coming up for the next story. That's correct. Um, he was the squad leader. And so I don't know if that, and that's why I call it the M.A. Adoka situation. I don't think that's illegal. I wouldn't consider that grooming. but. You kind of have a position of authority and power over here, and you're you. He seems to end up in relationships with people who he has power over. It's not quite a Tony Branch situation, 
but it's a little bit like Tony Branch, a little bit. So, yeah, people are like, the police department should be held accountable for her death. Do you guys really think this man was abusing her for 10 years and no one in the department knew about it? I think that is a, it wasn't 10 years, but uh, I think that's a very fair question. They failed her and swept it under the rug. Um, and to the Stoughton Police Department's credit, you know, this new chief there, McNamara, like she was fucked. She was held no punches, man. In her statement, she did not, she wanted to be very clear about this, that there's a new sheriff in town here and she's not putting up with this. Uh, and so this whole post organization, like post thing that was created after George Floyd, I've been critical of it. The police don't like it. But I think in this case, it's a good thing because you shouldn't be able to just go and get a job as another cop like that. And that's ultimately what like there should be some sort of registry, like a, like anything like a Corey check. Like, no, nah, you can't, it should be with teachers too, by the way, teachers often happens. Oh, excuse me. It often happens that teachers like, you know, uh, if they get caught allegedly being inappropriate with a girl or whatever in school, eh, they just they're like, okay, we'll just write you a letter of resignation go apply at another school. You could be their problem. There should be some sort of registry. It's just common sense that we don't have deviants going from department to department, you know, uh, going around, not a question who would run the post and, and whatnot. That's a different story, but certainly it would seem like, uh, people like them should not just be able to just move on to the next one. Cause that's what the Abington guy did. I don't know what Matt Farwell is doing these days, but I know Billy Farwell just moved down to, uh, Baltimore, uh, DC area and is working in TSA. So he, cause nothing comes up on his record now. Uh, and, and we'll see about, I mean, how'd you like that guy groping you? If those people aren't creepy enough, TSA. Yikes. Uh, I don't know what divine is doing. He's an attorney. So he's got that going for him, but I, I guess he, when you're an attorney, scumbags can hire you and you can make a living doing that. Right. Um, but you know, his wife's a cop to me. That's interesting too. What did she know about all this <sighs> fucking Pandora's box here, man? So, yeah. Um, like I said, it, it just disgusts me. This whole thing. Let me ask Deb, what, what, what are your thoughts on this Deb? It's, it's terrible. It's like crap. You know, no one should be subject to this. No one should use their power like that. Agreed. Agreed. This is a serious abuse of power on the part of these uh, police officers. Uh, let me, uh, by the way, thank you. Let me check my uh, donos here. I didn't check the turtle chats if we got any. Um, oh, we didn't miss any. That's cool. I don't think we did. Uh, so we got a cash app from seven pounder. My cash app, by the way, is dollar sign uncle turtle boy. Good at If you guys like stories like this and you like the journalism I do, this is what I do for a living. It's free. It's always going to be free. But if you want to support the cause and uh, keep this going, it, it can't like the type of journalism that I do uh, can't exist in this world uh, because of censorious tech overlords. So like I'm banned from Google AdSense and shit. Uh, so like the only way reporting like this gets done is, you know, people put tips in the jar. So I appreciate that. Any donos, they're not required, but they're certainly welcomed. Uh, Seven Pounder sends ten dollars and he says for Keith Mead. Stop dropping nips in people's trucks. See, that's the kind of message that I like. I have no idea what it means, but it sends a strong message anyway. Okay. Um, and yeah, again, did any, let's, I, if, if sometimes the donos don't go through, can you not full screen? No, I get it on my phone there, seven pounder. You, you've done cash up a million times. You know how it works. Uh, so no, I cannot get my phone <laughs> on the screen. Okay. Um, so thank you. So, and I got somebody messaging me right now. Do you know um, this guy is TSA now? Imagine getting patted down by him. Does anybody watch the show? <laughs> Literally talking about that right now on live show. Tune in. <laughs> Tune in. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, there's that. Let me see. Do we get any don't? Let me check. Sometimes the turtle chats don't go through. We get Okay. There's been like now, over 300 all night, dude. So there's been 300 donos. No people watching. So oh, okay. Like, okay, know. yeah. Oh, yeah. So no, that's cool. Uh, if you guys like it, uh, again, it's linked at the top there. You can donate whatever. You click on that. You donate whatever amount of money you want. 
and then you got to write a message. I'll get an email notification about it. I will bring your email up on the big screen for everyone to see. Okay. Uh, Junkman says, Unk, want to reel back paraphrase? There should be allegations registry on teachers. I don't know what that means. Why'd you bring that one up? I don't know, I think he wants you to explain it, like what you meant by that. Well, he has to speak English. I have no idea okay. what that I means. I think I'm what? interpreting, yeah. Trying so to you can try again in English, Junkman, and then we can maybe I can answer your question. So if you have a question, is ask the question. Okay. Um, so, again, hit the thumbs up button. Yeah, how many thumbs up we got in this video, by the way? How many uh, likes we got? We got 120 okay. guys. We got we've had 300 over 300 in here all night. Let's go get those yeah. up. Okay. Other questions you guys have. <laughs> when does Andy shit bag again? I didn't break this story. I just put it all together. You know, so he thinks I diddled the student. No, Junkman's a fan. I don't know what he's talking yeah, about. He yeah. What's 122? Oh, everyone's saying likes. Okay. Yeah, just hit that like. I mean, I see 314 of you motherfuckers in here. Smash that like button. It takes two seconds. No, but actually that really helps with the algorithm. So if you want to support what we do, uh, I, it's it's cool. It's like it takes costs you nothing. Just hit that like button. You just said there should be a registry on teachers when someone makes an allegation. Okay? So what's your question, dude? If you have a question, ask the question. So... Um, Anybody else have any other questions they want to ask? But a, a Corey check only checks for crimes if you've been charged with a crime. Martha's Vineyard freestyle needs to be played. Oh, you like the Martha's Vineyard one? I didn't think that was one of my best, to be perfectly honest with you, but I'm glad you liked it. The Kate Peter one, the yeah, DMX anything one. Anything will ever top that, dude. That no, nothing's amazing. ever going to top that, ever. Okay, anybody else have any other questions they want to ask? Is Mac Jones lying about his ankle? Uh, why would he? What's with the questions tonight? Yeah, he's lying. Yeah, he's lying. It's a big, what? I don't know. Can we get some real questions, guys? Is Mac Jones lying about it? Uh, so where is the other twin? Uh, I don't know. As I mentioned in there, I don't know. Okay. Jessica, his cash app is dollar sign Uncle Turtle. Boy. Yeah, I'm dollar sign Uncle Turtle Boy. If you guys would like to donate that way, I'll get, an, I'll get a notification on my phone. I'll be able to read it out loud when you do that. Message to them. Uh, Peter Skeeter's on chat today. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, so last night on my thing. Go watch last night if you're into that kind of stuff with the chili de Castro stuff. Basically, I, I showed that I had nothing to do with this gentleman and he begged me to help him out for quite some time. Uh, so it kind of killed Krusty Panty's whole lie there that I'm aligning with this, weird, you know, this obviously disturbed individual. Um, and a lot of, I got, you know, I was watching the discord and a lot of them were like, oh, this guy, the turtle boy doesn't seem so bad. He actually seemed reasonable. <laughs> that did not go over well with her. She was like, no, he's, he's worse than Chili. They are working together. Like she's really still trying to push that narrative. She's a, a very dishonest and manipulative person. And it's sad to see somebody like that. Uh, anybody else have any other questions? Two questions. Somebody said, um, does KP says she doesn't wear underwear? Uh, well, yikes. Well, she oh. probably destroyed so many pairs of them after a while. that it's like, <laughs> you know, she did the math and it's like, it's just not worth the budget. Uh, so <laughs> no. Crusty jeans? I don't know. Crusty Levi's? I don't know. Uh, how can he be TSA? Because there's nothing on his record. You know, why can't he be TSA? All right, Jessica Stallworth sends $10 on the cash app and says, for court officers, love you. Well, thank you. And, and that's one thing I do want to point out to all these crusty panties in the world. It's like every time I go to a courthouse, and I go a lot, it doesn't matter what courthouse I go to, I always get some type of positive comment from a court officer where and I love it. It's very, it is very humbling and very satisfying uh, to know that people you don't know in these random places far away from your home, read your content and appreciate it. And they come and like, those are my kind of people, court officers, right? People that go to work every day, make an honest living, 
enforce the law, deal with scumbags. They get it. They get it. Like that's why court officers are inclined to like Turtle Boy because they see the worst of the worst every day, and they like to see these scumbags exposed. Like, I mean, Springfield, uh, Boston, um, Brockton, doesn't matter. Like, whatever courthouse I go to. It's like a guarantee, and I love you people. Uh, so thank you guys uh, for your hard work and the work that you guys do out there. It's, it's graciously appreciated. Bobby Silva sends $10 on the Cash App for Tidman Strong. That will be for corrections officer Matt Tidman, who is uh, – I, I, hopefully he's out of the coma, but he was put into a coma uh, because he was assaulted by a career criminal at Shirley Medium Security Prison by a lifelong criminal who announced that he was going to do what he did. And it's a vicious, vicious assault. So thank you very much for the cash app, Bobby Silva, for Tidman Strong. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Uh, got your Brian Hoyer jersey. Oh, yikes. I mean, the schedule is so bad coming up that we should still win games with Brian Hoyer. If you can't do that, then what kind of system do we have? Like Bill Belichick's going to get severely exposed if he doesn't start winning some games. You should have a nude paid message. Uh, you should have a, what does that mean? Maybe he means like turtle chat. Oh, turtle chat. Let me check. Okay. So I got one from, so I got them. I just don't have them. In the goddamn, I didn't get an email. So I got one from Scott. So Scott, I got the dono, $10. Thank you very much. Why don't you put your comment in there in the in the show? And I'll bring it up that way. I also got a dono here that did not, I didn't get the message with it. It is from April Showers. So if April would like to go ahead and do the same, uh, I will bring up whatever message you put on there. And Deb will put it on the big screen. So yeah. we'll do it that way. Okay, um, it's broken. Uh, anything up with Jamie Genero? Uh, no, that that lawsuit moves so slowly. That lawsuit because uh, there's so many defendants that it's just hard to get any of them, all the lawyers, in the same room at the same time. That guy's just such a moron. I hate him so much. When is Chrissy's next court date? Sometime in October. That's a good point. I got to look into that. Not entirely sure. Oh, good good question. Up. Yay. Yeah, it's definitely coming up. How's Tom Mountain doing? Uh, you know, uh, still doing his thing. I'm sure he's. Back up to his tricks, no doubt about it. Talking with BB, his boy. Um, <laughs> BB. So that's a good question. Shenanigans says. Uh, so she asks, "I need to know what the wives of these scumbags did. Did they stay stand by saying not my husband? To my knowledge, they're all still with them. Uh, and yeah, to me, the only way that these women would choose to stay with them, like a lot of people stay together, you know, like." I get it, but not for something like this, not for like grooming a kid and then she kills herself. Like that's a, you know, that's the, like, nobody's going to do it. So the only logical explanation I can reach why, why they would stay with them is they just choose not to believe it. They just, they, they, you believe it. You're just like, well, my husband says they're lying and this is a conspiracy against them and that none of this is true. And I know my husband, so like, of course, this yeah. is not right. You, yeah, yeah, it's a lot easier to believe a lie than it is to accept the fact that you're being lied to. Right. You know, like that Especially is. It's by a lot someone easier. Really close to you, like that. You know, you're disrupting everything. Like divorce, fucking destroys homes, and uh, you know stuff like that. So it's a lot easier, I guess, for some of these. Like I got the. But again, at this point, like you got to open your eyes, girl. Like yeah, right. These people are fucking criminals. Like. It just morally depraved. The a girl is dead because of them. You know, the question: Do you want to rephrase the statement? No. I don't, why would I want to rephrase that? Um, what was your road trip when you went to Stoughton back in the day? Uh, I don't know. Did you see the feds drop the charges against? I, I I got a blog. I wanted to write a blog about Rachel Rollins doing that. Pisses me off. Yes, I did see that. That Shelly Joseph, the Newton judge who allowed an illegal immigrant to run out the back of the courthouse because ICE was in the court or sitting outside the courtroom so that he didn't get brought to jail, didn't get deported. Uh, he was she was charged by for, the former attorney Andrew Lelling, but now Rachel Rollins is the attorney, and so she doesn't charge people with crimes when it's for the right political reasons. Oh, please. And yeah, so she's uh, going to get away with that, I guess. 
Um, any update on the UMass med student? Uh, yeah. How is he still in school? Is he in school? I don't know. I haven't followed up on that. Good question. I, I don't have an update on that. If it is, it's because he's a member of a marginalized group. And so you get special privileges. I need your opinion later on the pipeline. What pipeline? To talk just about. got blown up something. Blown what? Up. The pipeline just got blown up. People I have saying, no I clue. Either. No clue. Um, did uh, did uh, April or um, Scott put their uh, messages? Let me see. Um, I don't see. I don't see anything. Scott, put your message in the. Yeah, if, chat. yeah. If you want, yeah, whatever okay, message you, okay, whatever you message chat. you sent on the turtle chat. Um, oh wait, yeah. no, I got Scott. It's okay. Andy, okay, okay, there we go. Cool. What's his turtle chat say? Andy, no, I think it's NGO. Mm -hmm. Says, I just broke a new story about the stone place. See, that's a good one. I like that one. I like that one. Thank you very much for the donor there, Scott. I wish uh, we could talk about the juvenile system. It's all I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Um, many employees, water cooler talk, turtle boy, blurred line says, very true. If you know the squad was in town, would you have attended the protest? Oh, yeah, I knew they were in town. But I just had shit to do, man. We had the live show that day. So, unfortunately, I can't just... Go to freaking Somerville for the day, you know? And I hate Somerville. I know, I was going to say, why would you want to? <laughs> no offense. That whole North Shore area, I don't even know if that counts as the North Shore. The Mary, we're, metro, the, we're Metro Boston. You're a fucking clusterfuck. That's what we're you nasty are. nasty Metro Boston. You are the most congested area of the state, and just way too it. many people are in such a small area. And I avoid it like the plague. Yeah. It takes literally uh, like a half hour to get from one end of Malden to the other. And Malden's not that fucking big. Like when school it, gets yes, out, forget it. It's not. Uh, Chrissy Gonzalez Perilla says, why do you have to talk about me? Um, I don't know, Chrissy, because you're a shitty person. Because you like to go around and uh, distribute revenge porn of random women and do horrible things to people. And just because you're a righteous cunt and I hope your business Royal thermal view goes under. That's why your children don't want to see you anymore. That's why Ray left. you. Yeah. yeah. Things aren't going well for you, Christy, but you know, you want to mess with the big boys. You got what you wanted. Do you regret it? I bet you do. Don't you Christy? I bet you do. But if we'll we're got... in October, you better go and cost. Oh, you. I'll be there. Cr Pull Chrissy. I, if Chrissy goes to jail, I will be visiting her every weekend, man. Every weekend. I don't care if she comes out to visit me. I'm still going. I'm putting my name on the visitors list. Um, did you read the internal affairs report about divine hugging and kissing a middle schooler? Oh, yes. I did read that, actually. I did. I forgot to even put that. There was so much I read today. Now, that woman came out 20 years later and was like, yeah, he was inappropriate with me. And... It, I believe her story is corroborated by other people as well. So we've been doing this for quite some time. I, that's why I think divine is the ringleader of all this. Uh, anybody else have any other questions? Do you think there should be a registry of allegations? Um, I think when it's like, When it's legitimate, like, so my, I guess, let me clarify that when, like, so I, if you read my book, uh, you know, that hot Tom, the teacher at Shepherd Hill, he used to teach at Millbury. He had sex with a student at Millbury. I know that as a fact, because I used to be friends with hot Tom, not friends, a, a kind of acquaintances. And I found out like my roommate, the guy who ended up becoming my roommate, was living with Hot Tom, and he's like, I got to get out of here because he's bringing home a, a student. I got to get the fuck out of this apartment. So he moved in with me. And so Milbury found out about that. And the superintendent was basically like, okay, we're going to let you go, um, but we're not going to tell anyone why. And so he ended up applying for a job at Shepherd Hill. So you know, that was more than just an allegation. That was kind of like well known that he was banging this girl. And they were just like, what happened? Like that should not happen under any circumstances. And he ended up getting fired at Shepherd Hill within like six months because he came to school drunk and he beat up a student, a freshman, while he was drunk because he'd use all his sick days. He couldn't use any more sick days. And uh, the school, Shepherd Hill, covered it up by, you can search this. I mean, I, I found the news articles. 
he came to school drunk. He beat the shit out of this kid in front of class. It was videotaped by students who, because it was hilarious. And his excuse was that they were reenacting Animal Farm. That not his excuse. That was the district's lie that they told in order to cover up for this guy. And it's just I've, I've worked in schools. They cover shit up, man, all the time, all the time. Yeah, she is Jalene Maxwell, kind of. Yeah, maybe. That's heavy. That's heavy. Does uh, see delete laws admit on a show that he doesn't know? Yeah, it's like I don't, I don't follow Mr. Chili De Castro, um, but that doesn't surprise me. He acts like he does. He acts like he does. That's for goddamn sure. Okay. I guess uh, core records are basically that. I give up allegations after the okay. Yeah. Uh, so I guess I get what you're getting at, junk man. It's just it's a tough one. Okay, any other questions you guys have? Thank you very much, Scott. I really do appreciate the donos. I appreciate that very much. And I get what you're saying. Like, there should be an innocent until proven guilty thing. But I just, I don't know. I guess there needs to be something. Like, I just think of the hot Tom rule. Like, that sh- hot Tom should not be banging girls in Millbury. And then Millbury finds out about it. And then he goes and gets a job at Shepherd Hill. That should not be happening ever. Uh, has Chili contacted me? No, he has not. I, he told me he's never talked to me again. He's done with me, so I don't expect to hear from Chili anytime. Big loss, soon. big loss. Yeah, big loss, big loss. <laughs> oh, I forgot about the KKK sheep at the freaking Biggie. I forgot about. No, I, I, I'm not going to the Biggie this year. Maybe next year I can do a blog about. It. Did you hear about the? Uh, did you hear about Think Underage Skinner, who got caught? I think you meant the, yeah. Yeah, check out the blog I just published. I just published a blog on it. I, I was like, yeah, isn't, wasn't that when yeah. you did? <laughs> well, I did publish it like five minutes before the live show started. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, go 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 check out the blog. That was actually the one that just came out. Um, okay. I went to two different high schools. Both of them had teachers, bank students. Jesus. What is with these guys? I was They're never. Nasty. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. So when I first started Shepard L, I was 24 years old. And the, 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 like the seniors, like they're, they want to be cool. They want to be like, Oh, who's the new young teacher, you know? And it was just uncomfortable because I'm not like, that's one number one rule. You don't bang your roster, man. God, no. They didn't even think about it. Uh, and because I'm just like, I was uncomfortable with it. And so I tried to be as uncool as possible with them. Just think it like, I'm like, maybe they think I'm like a nerd to like, leave me alone. Uh, but they don't care. They're, they are aggressive, um, and I, I, I had a thing, like with extra help in my room or anything like that. If I gave extra help to a student and they were alone, boy or a girl, it's like, especially a girl, it's like we're going to we're gonna go in the hallway. <laughs> like I'm not, no, 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 we're going to sit in the hallway because there's cameras there. We're not doing anything in my room at all, ever. I would never, ever, ever be alone with the student in my room after school hours or during my prep ever god no i wouldn't even have a whiff of it man not even close so it's just like these people that do that stuff it's like what is wrong with you you know like how can, you're really you you can't your inability to keep your sexual urges down is that poor like jesus christ dude People All are right. terrible. Like my like my high school principal, like after I graduated, he got busted for child porn, and they like they fired him. But like while he was there, well for one years before they caught him, oh. and like there was some other guy who taught health for years. And he was retiring, and he we had like we it was a weird classroom with like tiers, like the yep. desks were kind of like tiers, and he'd make all the girls wearing skirts sit on like the first few tiers so he could see up their dresses. Yeah, because his desk Ooh. was below. Jesus, it's like gross. Just they're all gross. What's up with Yudoka? That's a great question. I've looked into this as much as I can. And until I see more out of this, I think he got a raw deal. I think, he, yeah, dude, you're going to suspend. Okay, he broke a team rule. He, how about this? I thought about this today with the Yudoka situation. If if Ime Yudoka was not engaged to another woman, and the mystery woman who, shall, who won't be named for some reason, if the mystery employee was not married either would anyone care 
Would anyone care? Would would Yudoka be suspended for a year right now? Answer me that. Do you guys think? Let's let's take a vote on this in the comments right now. So Ime Yudoka, the coach of the Celtics, was fired or suspended for a year. I think he's going to be fired for having sex with a an employee. Do you think that the same suspension would have happened if he was single and she was single? Vote one in the comments if, yeah, you think it would have been the same suspension. Vote two if you don't think it would be the same suspension because I would vote two. I mean, do you think, what do you think, Deb? Do you think he would get, do you think, because I, I feel like part of the hatred of Ime Yudoka and the way they're treating him is puritanical because they're like, how dare you cheat on your your queen, on your knee Yeah, no, exactly. Queen, That's exactly you know? that. That's like, a how great dare party. you? She's a beautiful black woman and how dare you do that you pig i mean that's the angle right. no, i've seen from a lot of these people of it, yeah. it's like so if he was single would it be okay i mean that's yeah, they would, they would that's go. that's what i'm getting like that's the message that seems to be getting sent right here no oh, yeah they wouldn't is that shit. like oh he's like if she it, so you know suzap says uh flea says if she still made the allegations so i, I mean I'm, I'm with carl it's like i don't think if i think if he was just a single dude and that she was a whoever he slept with was single. I don't think anyone will give a shit. It's the fact that right. they're married, which is so stupid. Because why is that the Celtics' concern? That doesn't right. fucking matter. He would. He had a. He was a great coach this year. They almost won the NBA title, and we're gonna fuck this all up because the guy got horny and stuck his dick in something he shouldn't have. Like Jesus Christ! It's not like he freaking groomed her from age fifteen and got her to kill herself. Like right. Jesus Christ! How puritanical is this bullshit? It's I think just I, too much behind closed doors shit. Like, this is nothing. It's not relevant to your job. It doesn't affect your job. It's like, there, it doesn't have anything to do with it. Fuck Team Rose. If the, okay, so suspend him for fucking two weeks or a month or so, a year? Are you fucking kidding me? There better be more to this. There better be something more. He must There's gotta be some connection or he something. He better, right? if Ime if Yadoka didn't do something really fucked up, and it's just, if this is just what happened, He's a, an engaged man who had an affair with a married woman who worked for the team. Fuck this shit, dude. This is bullshit. Bullshit. There better be more. And shame on the Celtics for not being more transparent about this, too. Like, like, how, why does she, why does he get outed, but not the woman? Right? It takes... To, right. He didn't rape her, right? So then yeah, what? So like, was she choice, some, innocent, so she's some innocent victim in this? No. Yeah, and they she both did it. at fault. Like, she's married. It's fucking yeah. cheated too, bro. Like, Yeah. And it looks like most people are with me on this. Like, most people are voting, too. Yeah, They're like, yeah. Ime Yudoka is getting a raw deal here. Like, the more I assumed, like, I saw the Matt Barnes thing when he was like, oh, yeah. Uh, it's, it's actually much worse. But, like, does he actually know that? Or was he just, like, looking on Twitter? And people are like, oh, it's much worse. It's got to be much worse. Is it? Or is that just something people are saying? Like, the Celtics could easily just clarify all of this. But instead, they're like, you know, fucking Brad Stevens crying like an asshole up there. Oh, my God, the women in the Celtics organization who are, having, who are being speculated about on Twitter as being the one. Yeah, you know why they're being speculated about, Brad? Because you're not saying who it was. Yeah, <laughs> and when you don't when you it. don't say who the women the woman was, people start doing that. So maybe you could protect those women by saying the woman who actually fucked them. And that would fucking clear this all up, wouldn't it? Who cares? We all know Monica Lewinsky's name, right? Right. Why do you even know this woman's name? Like, like well, our coach is missing a whole year of this shit. We don't know the woman. Why? What? Why is he the only one taking this? Two people came. Like, why is, it, oh, is only one of them fucking getting in trouble for it? Jesus Christ. That's not like they're, they're, I, that's what I was saying a few days ago, Jack. There has to be more to the story. I'm no longer saying there has to be. Now I'm saying there better be more to the story. I'm at that point now where it's like, is there? Is there more to the story? Because this is turning, it's starting to smell like, how dare you fuck my wife? Like, that's what it's starting to smell like to me. And if that's the case, it's like, dude, put your fucking ego aside. Ime Doka fucked your wife. Nobody cares about you. You're expendable. He's not. Okay. Deal with it. Okay. You're, you're, you got, your wife got fucked by the, one of the best coaches in the NBA. You should, it's better than, better than the alternative. You know, would you rather get fucked by somebody who like 
or you know, uh, maybe if Steve Nash fucked your wife, he can't coach. That that would be upsetting. But he may dunk. Yeah, I mean, you can fuck your wife. You know, whatever. Uh, anyway, I heard from an inside source that Yudoka did the classic sexual harassment on Kathleen. Told her she better or else. I mean, this, these are rumors. It's like, I don't, that sounds cartoonish. Like, I don't believe that happened. What happens with like, if this, this does stick like this, like then the players start getting fucking accused and shit. Like, is that going to trickle down? Like, what about all the players that cheat on their fucking significant others when they're traveling? Like, it's Which they all do. Yeah, of all, course. You know, it's all like, of them. Yeah, like you're an so NBA player. So you're going to fire everyone, you suspend the whole fucking league because they're you all they, fucking, you know? I mean, that's, it's like, I guess you're just, I mean, you're supposed to stick to fucking groupies, I guess. Not Celtics right. employees. Is there like I don't a group of like a pre-approved people you can like, fuck with? Safe yeah, people? you stick to the, you, you just can't work to the organization. They're, they're for <laughs> dignified it. women. Yeah, you can't find, you can't fuck our dignified women here. Okay. The executive, the, you know, the vice president of promotional affairs. Yeah. The, who does like scheduling the comms director. Yeah. You can't fuck her. She wears a pantsuit. Sorry. Stick well, to yeah, the whores. No, like okay? yeah. You and, and, come and, and, all over every other girl's face around here, yeah. but not her. Her, She's special. You don't get to stick your dick in that. Sorry. Jesus Christ. So puritanical. It's bullshit. Um, yeah. Like why do people care? Like it's, it's, it's truly amazing. And I think it's, I don't know if it's an American thing, but. People really care about who's fucking who. Like, it's amazing. Like, who cares? Like, I just, I could never waste any, like, the the bobbin for boners story, like, four years ago. Obviously, I talked about that. Because that shit was funny. Like, it's not like I was mad at her. I was never mad at Deirdre Hall bobbin for boners because she banged uh, Eddie Porkchops and the town manager. I don't care about, like, that doesn't bother me. She's married. She, like, I wasn't mad at her. It was funny because it was Eddie Porkchops. <laughs> like, that guy was a fucking fat bastard. And she's bang, like, she's banging everyone in town, in the inside town hall and shit, too. Winking at them. Like, that's funny. That's a story, right? An elected official doing something like that. That's funny. But it's like, he made Dougal, who's he bothering? So he fucked some random chick. Who cares? Stop it. Stop fucking wives. Stop caring about who's fucking who. Like, who cares? Who cares? It's none of your business. It's nobody's business who's fucking who. Jesus Christ. Um, like, and that, and I'm with you. Like, there better be some crazy. If there ain't, this is a fuck. This is fucking bullshit. Free my boy, Ime. That's what I got to say about that. Okay. Anybody else? Sorry if I missed your comments. Anybody else have any comments or anything they want to bring up there? Let me check the donos. I don't want to miss anyone. A turtle uh, said something earlier. What did he so, say? Oh, sorry, I missed I'm it. I'm trying to find it. Let me see. Something about like records on cops or something now. Uh, CSK says it's uh, in France. It's almost understood that men of what? Yeah, I mean that's why Ben Franklin liked France so much. Oh yeah, right. So they were they were just cool about shit. Um, the new police reform bill covers some of the stuff uh, for police officers. Anyone can request a police officer's discipline. Yeah, that's what I was talking about with the post thing. Um, it just doesn't affect you. Who's fucking anyone else? Like that. The, yeah, I care about when people get hurt, like actual hurt, not just like you know. Their feelings hurt, which like that's when when your spouse cheats on you, it's like that's your feelings are hurt, right? Like that's the whole thing. It's like supposedly some people don't even their feelings aren't even hurt about that because they're in a situation where it's kind of understood and they've talked about it already and they're lit, you know, they're separated, but they're making it work for the kids, right? Uh yeah, that's that's a little bit different. Okay. Every situation is different. Nobody knows it, and it's really nobody's fucking business, period. I don't know. Maybe Nia Long and um, Ime Adoka were on the outs. None of my business. Don't care. Can he coach the basketball team? That's all that matters to me. Yikes. Uh, anybody else? Has Chili ever been married? I have no idea. I don't know anything about Chili. Probably not. I mean, I'm assuming that. I'm just going to go with no. I don't know much about Chili's history. All right. Anybody else have any more questions? Before turtle, we... yeah, he, has, he has no idea what the topic of the turtle club is yet. It's only Tuesday. Oh yeah, dude. I'll talk to me at eight o'clock <laughs> on Tell Thursday. You, like, yeah, eight o'clock. Yeah. I'll know then. 
maybe. But yeah, I mean, I kind of like I, I've, I've started to turn use Turtle Club as like an extra live show um, that nobody else gets. And I kind of like it that way Yeah, uh, because because I'm only only doing this twice a week is like I'm right. missing a lot of shit, I feel like. So, yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. So shit, it's more you know? of an incentive if you want more covered than join Turtle right. Club, dude. Yeah, I'm start. I'm a sexual libertarian. That's for sure. Uh, I've never been uh, one of those real Christian conservatives like, yeah. Like I guess like I'm, I'm anti-abortion, I guess, but like, uh, and I've been, and that's but that's never been like my thing. Like I never come on here and lecture anyone about that. It's not high on my priority list. Uh, but sexually, it's like I've always been, I guess, liberal, you know, in that regard. All right, anybody else have any other questions? All right. So I guess we'll call it a night, folks. Thank you all for the donos if you gave. I really appreciate that. Um, we love you all. Join Turtle Club if you guys haven't done so already. Smash that like button. 157, man. We got 241 people in here. It literally takes two seconds, not even, to just, there's a thumbs up button on your video. Hit it. Hit it, hit it, hit it. Let's see him grow. Come on. 156. Who unliked? Okay, oh, come rude. keep swearing. I'm uh, watching this on a pack train in Australia and everyone <laughs> in the carriage. Okay, fuck you, right, cunks. I hope you all get fucked by a kangaroo and then the wombat comes on your face. How about that? Wow, all right. huh? No, don't really do that. Don't really do that. It's not fair to the wombats. They don't like that. No, not, no I didn't mean anything to the wombats. Sorry. Yeah, the, the, just leave the dingoes alone, okay? Right. I love the wombats. Yeah, they'll bite your back. All right, guys. Uh, so we will see you guys all, uh, some of you on Thursday night for Turtle Club. We'll see everybody else on Saturday night for the next episode. Uh, next episode. Any, uh, I'd love a TC section. Unk, what's, I don't. TV I don't know what that means. Okay. I don't know what Jack that means. Jack wants to know if there's a way to get on five Turtle Club besides your tweet. Uh, uh, a turtle club tweet? Yeah, no, he only he wants to be have like a notification system besides like you you tweeting it right when it starts. Oh. Some other people have mentioned that too. Is there a way we can set that up? Like well, it goes nine thirty it's nine thirty Thursdays. Yeah, no, I know. But people like nine thirty I mean, put it in your Google calendar, folks. I don't know. Yeah. Um do you get that with this show? because uh, so you do get notifications. Yeah, well you can use it all for YouTube, yeah. So Yeah, I mean you can sign up for the emails because every time I publish a new blog. And the shows are a blog, so you could. I would yeah, sign up sure. for the emails. I would just sign up for the email notification. Get, get an email every time we publish a blog. That's what I would do. And I, I want more email subscribers anyway. That's because that's the best way. If we ever get kicked off, when I get kicked off of Twitter, when I get kicked off of Facebook, it's good to have an email subscriber list. So, all right, guys. Um, so we will see you guys all for the next episode of live. And thank you, Deb, for everything. We'll talk thank to you guys you. later. Peace. Have a good night, everyone.